in the wilderness of Genom, the Plutonian, Auroran, and Modansi came across a self-proclaimed god called Zotan, who also claimed to be the architect and creator of all reality. But to them, they thought he was delusional, whom the Plutonian believes that Zotan is psychotic and having a mental breakdown. It was more funny to the Plutonian, for he thinks Zotan needs medication for his state of mind. Zotan, perceiving and seeing the disrespect from the Plutonian and his allies decided to use his powers by drowning them in the sand of the wilderness. To prove Zoltan was no god but a delusional entity, the Plutonian used the sand Zoltan used in attacking them, used his laser fiery beam to heat up the sand to a very high temperature and transformed it into a glass ball, then smashed it on the giant entity Zoltan, who died instantly. Now, out of nowhere, Aurora noticed that the Plutonian had his costume back on. In captivity, Kaidan was stuck with a zombified Sila who was uncommunicative and under the influence of Mobius. And it was hard for Kaidan to use her powers as her neck was strapped with a device which inhibits her ability to put her thoughts together, which made it difficult for her to conjure spirits to come to her aid. And as much as she tried to communicate with Sila's spirit, it was impossible for he was neither dead nor alive. In truth, Kaidan still loves Sila from the bottom of her heart, despite his zombified condition. For what attracted her to him was his confidence, arrogance, and fearlessness. He was sure of himself and a potential alpha male who overshadowed his twin brother, Charit Beast, who was then shy, docile, and timid, who didn't have the guts and credence to string up words together. For both of them were in love with Kaidan and this she was aware of. But she was more attracted to Sila. She couldn't help it. And before Charlie Beast could know what was happening, Kaidan and Sila consummated, made passionate love. And the rest is history. This hurt the feelings of Charlie Beast, whom harbor a secret resentment towards his brother Sila. Now Kaidan communicating with a zombified Sila about her feelings gave an open gateway for the spirit of Sila to appear before her. And as the spirit Sila tried to communicate with Kaidan, she was finding it very difficult to understand him. In the deep core of Genom, the Plutonian and his allies continued on their journey to the hub and it was hard for the Plutonian to see further ahead. This was due to the side effect of the massive teleportation matrix at the core of Genom, which bends space-time. And Auroran thinks that there is a possibility that those who guard and protect the hub at the core of Genom are using the planet's radiation to scrabble the powers of Plutonian. Now, out of nowhere, a big large entity jumped crazily towards them, punching the Plutonian on the face. As Modanse screamed the entity away from them, the Plutonian warned him that if he come close to him again, he was going to kill him. But the large big entity was screaming that it was the voices that are forcing him to attack had them, sounding apologetic, begging them to help him stop it. At first, they thought he had lost his marbles, and to be frank and to be honest, he was acting and behaving erratically, and he was agitated. The strangest bit is that the Plutonian confessed that he could hear the voices the big large entity was talking about, and that he wasn't hallucinating. Realizing that the entity had mouths at his back talking to him to do horrible things, the Plutonian wrapped the big large entity's body with metal shit which stopped the voices from the entity's back and he introduced himself as Khan. Then the Plutonian asked him to join them in escaping Genom. Going down a dark tunnel which might lead them to the core center of Genom, it was still difficult for the Plutonian to see any further and Khan told them that he had tried to pass through this tunnel but for some reason the voices from his back told him to go back as they continued on. Suddenly it struck the Plutonian where he had seen the face of Auroran, in which Auroran asked him what the problem was, but the Plutonian deflected. Now, when they got out of the tunnel, it was cold and snowy, but to their astonishment, they saw a female entity with sharp claws striking at herself really hard, screaming, why wouldn't she bleed? The Plutonian found her amusing. In fact, he likes her. The Plutonian walked up to her to stop her from hurting herself, but she mistakenly struck him. The 
appeal to their eyes meeting for when she scratches herself while looking at someone the person she is looking at gets hot in which the plutonian understood that the female entity can't feel her own touch Auroran, who was in no mood of the plutonian's romantic gesture told him to leave her but out of nowhere another plutonian blasted its way into their midst warning the plutonian not to listen to Auroran and that he should take the female entity with him now those whom protect and guard the hub at the deep core center of Ginnum were getting some feed outside of Ginnum that was causing an interference and trying to penetrate the hub through their technology and was met with a surprise as Qubit and Modius android whom is being inhabited by Modius appeared in their presence and demanding for the Plutonian.